Iron workers are a culture unto themselves. They're fearless. They, they climb, they work at heights, they work in heavy, with heavy equipment. On top of the caissons, the iron workers would rivet the towers of the Mackinac Bridge together in sections. Eventually, those towers would soar 550 feet above the turbulent water. To improve safety on site, engineer David Steinman believed in rehearsal off site. Your iron workers have put this tower together before. They just put it together horizontally. They completely prefabricated the towers on land, then took them apart before they floated them in sections up to the straits. But the work down on the water was not over yet. The entire structure depended on base plates that were just four inches thick. It is critical because if this base plate isn't set straight and true, your column is not going to be set straight and true. Leveling the base plates was a harrowing job. It comes in in a crane from a derrick on a barge, so you're kind of moving around. You've got wave and wind coming at you, and you have to set this true because this is going to be the base of your entire tower. Once the plates were secure, iron workers were ordered to mount the first tower sections from the same barge, but the rolling deck made it impossible. They stop using the barge, and they start using what's called a creeper. And a creeper is a boom that's actually mounted to the tower itself, and it builds its pieces up. All summer and into the fall, the workers inched up and into the Michigan sky, bolting in place 13,000 tons of steel. The topmost piece was installed 552 feet above the straits. Just like today, that's called a topping off, and the American flag was flown, and that was a really big day. To celebrate, the crew took the father of the Mackinac Bridge, Prentice Brown, to the top. He's kind of surprised when the steel workers say to him, oh, you're coming up to the top of the tower. Three hundred and fifty feet below, the roadway of the bridge would be suspended by hundreds of vertical cables. Those would hang from a pair of beefy main cables 24 inches in diameter. To hang those cables, the crew had to construct a temporary sidewalk in the sky. Instead of heavy steel, they tried something lighter. They hoisted big rolls of chain link fence to the top of the towers and they were going to stretch these chain link fence pieces out to make a walkway, like a catwalk. The height was a problem. Being over the water was a problem. The catwalk is one of the most frightening things I think I've ever seen in my life. Bouncing 40 stories above the water, two men met to mark the completion of the catwalk with a high wire handshake. And the aerial acrobatics were just beginning. To create the enormous cables between the towers, they used a giant spinning wheel. The wheel deposited eight small wires with every round trip, but it would take 12,000 of these wires to make each main cable. A single spinning wheel would never get the job done before the ice set in. So, Steinman added a second. One would run north to south, one would run south to north and they would always meet right in the middle. It was that highly defined an operation. Those crisscrossing wheels threatened to knock a man off the catwalk, so somebody got creative. They put a cowbell on the spinning wheel so that every time it rotated, there would be this clanking of the cowbells uh, to alert workers. This was one case where nobody in his right mind would ask for more cowbell. The cabling crew spun an astonishing 42,000 miles of cable in just 78 days. Very much a great sense of pride by the collective effort there to bring this job to conclusion in uh, such a short period of time. Now, the catwalk was no longer necessary. So Steinman repurposed it. Once the cables were spun, the wires that were used to support the catwalk were actually taken back and reused as suspender rope. And the suspender cables go down and are connected to the actual bridge deck, and that's what holds that up. They hung
long steel suspender ropes to support the roadway. They laid the roadway in 89 sections held up by steel trusses. The deck panels were specifically designed for rapid deployment. The trusses were prefabricated in St. Ignace and delivered to the bridge on massive barges. Once they were suspended precisely in place, they had to be filled with concrete, one section at a time. Instead of you having to have a wooden form that you poured the concrete in, it was a steel plate that was part of your structure. But the updrafts off the straits were brutal. A four-lane concrete roadway would act like a sail, and one harrowing image from a suspension bridge out west was seared into everyone's mind. The bridge shook so badly, and there were cars on it, and it finally just disintegrated. 